This episode of Quite Frankly was made possible by our friends from MacFun, great photo editing software for Mac. Go to our special MacFun community website for exclusive deals just for you guys. Hey guys, and welcome to this episode of Quite Frankly. Now, you saw in the previous episode that we switched to the big boy Wacom Cintiq, which I absolutely love. Now, with the 27 inch, there's something new. And that's actually this remote control. It's awesome. And online, you hear a lot of people talk about it like, I don't use the remote control because, well, I use my keyboard. With the 27 inch, the keyboard is often to the side. And well, economically wise, that's not very smart. So I started using the remote control immediately. Now, normally it's on the other side of my screen. I don't like it on this side because I'm right-handed. So normally it's on the other side. And the cool thing is it's magnetic. So you can place it wherever you want on the sides of the screen. Now I want to give you a small tip and it's really a very simple tip and maybe you already know it, but still keep watching. If you start up your system preferences on Mac, you have here the option for Wacom tablet. Now you can set everything up for your tip, your eraser, your calibration, and it's very, very straightforward. There is however, if you go to the EK remote, you can do keystrokes. Now, of course, you can choose all other, which means that the keystrokes works everywhere in your, in your OS. So you can do, for example, a double click, which you should actually do on your pen. But many, many keystrokes you can just put in your remote control and it works for the whole setup. The fun thing is, if you are in Capture One and you want to process something, now normally I set Capture One up for the recipe to go to Photoshop, meaning it's a recipe that creates a TIFF, Pro Photo RGB and opens up Photoshop. Now in Capture One, the command is actually Command D, which opens Photoshop, if that recipe is active, of course. In Lightroom, if you want to do something similar, you use Command E. Now it's very confusing, of course, to do that on the different keystrokes. For example, when I'm in Capture One, the top one is processed. When I'm in Lightroom, the one underneath is processed. That's very confusing. So we want to keep that as simple as possible. Now, if you go into your application settings, you can do all other, but you can also do, for example, Capture One and Lightroom. You can very simply do it by pressing plus and you see everything that's active at the moment, or you can browse on your computer and you can just choose the application you want. So let's close this for now and show you how I do it. Cancel works much better. So let's say we want to set up something for Capture One. And let's do the process. And I like to have that on the disk key. So what I do is I go here into keystroke. I go into keystroke and a new menu opens up. And in this case, you already see Command D. Now let's clear this. The only thing I now have to do is press on my keyboard, Command D. And I say here, process. Because it's not opening in Photoshop, it's the process button. Remember this, in Lightroom Command E is literally process and going to Photoshop. In Capture One, it's the active recipe and that can be more recipes. For example, you can have a recipe for TIFF, JPEG and Internet at the same time. So in Capture One, it's the process. But normally when I do my retouching and workflow, Command D for me actually is the active recipe, which I always set on Open Photoshop. So press OK. That's done. So now every time I press this key, Command D will be operated inside of Capture One. Now if I go to Lightroom, you can actually see that it's called Command E. So I have different setups for different programs. Now in Adobe Photoshop, if you have a 27 inch and the keyboard is on the side, it can be very, very, very confusing to know which keys you, you, you press and it's ergonomically, it's like a disaster. You will get back pains and your arms will hurt. So you have to get as much as possible in your remote control. So that's why in Photoshop I actually choose to do my settings, precision mode, display toggle and Wacom screen keys. Those are of course all the regular ones. But I have a keystroke called backspace because I love to select stuff and then use content aware fill and then use your backspace or delete key. Radio menu I still use but I hardly use the radio menu. The keystroke over here I made 100%. Now why is that? You can zoom of course, but I also like to change my brush size on the spot. 
So when you use the inner ring, you can zoom, you can tilt the image or rotate your screen, whatever you want to call it. And of course, you can do zooming by pressing the OK button. You switch between rotate, auto scroll zoom and brush size. Now, because well, the brush size I want to do with the inner ring, but going to 100% and to fill screen, that's actually the only thing I do. I never zoom to 80% or 70%, go to 100% or fill screen. So what I actually did is I created a keystroke in Photoshop called Command 1, which actually means 100%. So that's my keystroke. Now, if I want to go back to fill screen, what I actually do is a keystroke Command 0, which means go to full screen. That's actually the only things I need. Now the inner rings are still standard. Shift, Option, Command and Space. Those are very important because you sample with your healing brush or your clone tool or your color picker. And of course you need your space bar to move around the screen. I have the non-touch version. Now the ring keys, there I did something different. My ring key is normally set up as an undo. But what uh, Wacom normally does is only an undo. The problem is, if you press it again, it will redo, undo, redo, undo, redo. So I changed this keystroke to this. Command, Option, Set. And that's the step back, step back, step back. Because sometimes you want to go back three steps. Now, as it's set up standard, it only goes back one step and then it goes forward again. That's very confusing and, well, I'm Dutch. I want to do it as fast as possible. So I changed that one to Command Alt Set, going back several steps. If I press it after each other. Now the other keystroke, of course, is redo because sometimes I go back too fast. So I have a redo. Now the keystroke for that one, of course, you guys know that Shift Command Set. Okay. The other keystroke is save. Now, I don't use that a lot, but it's still easier to then go up there. Normally I use close, but you can change that. The new layer keystroke. That's also a very cool one and it's standard inside. It's Shift Command N. And of course the brush panel. Now the touch ring itself, I leave pretty much the same. Now the express keys, normally the keystroke I don't use a lot. And the new layer, you know, I can just do that from the side. So normally I change this to curves and this one to saturation. And now I can finally do everything with the remote control and I don't need to use my keyboard. The only time I use my keyboard is if I want to do something like renaming a file or something else. And the cool thing about the Wacom, watch this. You even have a keyboard which you can use. So actually you don't really need the keyboard for renaming. But on the keyboard I'm a little bit faster than this. Yeah, on the keyboard that goes faster. So thank you so very much for watching, enjoy your Wacom and as you can see, customize it to your liking and you will be very very fast in using the EK remote. Because out of the box, it's just out of the box. Make it your own.